Nation Nation. Hello, Lee Kemp here for another week on the podcast. As always, with both Ryan Boniface and Jose Neuer. How are we both? Good, thank you. We're great. And I'm going to do that. Ryan did last week, I'll do it this week. How are you, Lee? <laughs> We're so great. Thanks, Joe. Like you're reading it off a really bad auto cue. I don't have any work cue, just telling you, that you know. Hope not. It would be a long auto cue. Thank you, guys. I'm good. Thank you, Ryan, for asking. Um, I noticed this when I was listening back last week. I'm in the midst of decorating at the moment, which obviously everyone out there cares about. And I am super echoey at the moment because everything's been taken up everywhere. So I'm not quite as uh, soft on the ears as Ryan and Joe, but hopefully everyone can put up with that. Speaking of which, thank you, everyone, for listening, downloading, watching us YouTube, watching us across podcast players and joining us live on TikTok. Jay Noya underscore Inspiration Nation every Tuesday. Follow Joe. You can watch us live as well on the podcast. So this week, I'm going to pass the pickle of conversation. Yes. Ryan, don't roll your eyes. That was awesome. Come on. Joe gave a suggestion off air for that to be what we did when we talked about the fact it's my week this week, but we like to do this little little bit of show for people like we just join we, the podcast and don't have a we about me i right, entirely okay. like to do this and drag you guys in it with me <laughs> so this this could either be a really good long no more than half an hour people getting your inspiration conversation this week or this could be really quick and over in seconds so we'll see how it goes okay but i want to talk about a song and the way the song makes me feel and the way it makes me identify with a previous time in my life compared to where I am now. I was going to suggest we play a bit of said song, but we will get taken off of YouTube the second they discover it, as we found out when we watched an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine Live, so we won't no. do that. That episode is back in the archives, people. Can't even remember what that one's called, guys, actually, but it's back there uh, somewhere, people. Puddle Box. No. Puddle Box. Puddle yeah. Box. Well done, the, the ship well in the bottle done. episode, isn't it? Yes. That's a good one, before I'd exhausted all my knowledge of the world. So anyway, this song you may or may not have heard of is a little ditty called Mr. Brightside by The Killers. Yeah. A karaoke yeah, favourite of everyone's. Yeah, I before I give my ramble, do you have any immediate thoughts about said song before I move on? I've heard it, but it's not on my playlist. going to offend him. Jose, very disappointed. It's one that I hear, but anyway, I'm going to leave it because I'm going to let you do your thing because then I'll put in my bits. It's wow. the bright side is like the millennials, what Sweet Caroline was, uh, boomers, I think. Well, it I might take away that. take away the, <laughs> world, the World Cup football connotations of that. But Mr. Brightside is like always played at like, like I remember it being played at my school discos and things like that. I would say, and it's a good way to put it, it is an anthem of the early millennial era of which I belong. Um, came out in 2003. Do some reading, Ryan. I'm a crossover. I'm I'm uh, just eking to the millennials. <laughs> okay. Oh, we'll have a conversation off air about this. <laughs> have it on air. Let's just let's have it on air because this would be great video. Something's would be a great thing. I think it might be quite good. What is it? What comes before millennials? Isn't that is that Gen X? I think it is Gen be. X. Yeah. And like 90, 1978 to nineteen eighty two, the year in which I was born, is generally the crossover between X and millennials. I saw something that suggested you're a zennial if you're born in that era, which I quite like, in that we are the first and last, the last generation to grow up without the internet and the first to grow up with it because it became a thing probably when I was about 14, 15. Okay. Okay. So I spent a long time without it, but foremost of years with it. We've gone off a complete tangent. It's got nothing to do with what I'm talking about now. All oh, right. Okay. We'll revisit this. Generations is a good conversation. We'll keep that in the memory banks. Yep. Um, however, this the 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 song itself. It, I don't know. Whenever I hear it, it it literally takes me in my mind to being in a nightclub in my early twenties, and literally I can feel like I'm there and feel what I'm feeling at the time. And this is, and I'll be, you know, this is an open one for me on where I am. I I another conversation I've got for another time is I I 
I did a little experiment that I thought I'd use for a topic in the future where I spliced my life up into five year chunks. I made a note of where I was in different parts of my life at wow. each of those five years. Oh, Lee, something just popped into my head. Another song when you said that. <laughs> Spice Girl song, Splice Up Your Life. Right, we're just going to ignore that and move on. <laughs> so I, that's, not life, even, that's not even what it's called. <laughs> no, no it's Spice Up Your Life, isn't it? Is it not the called that? It, it, that? You called it Splice. Yes, I mean, splice. Um, that's what I'm trying to... Right. There's a joke in there, right? You know when you've got a life. drunk da, uncle da, 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 da. at the table that keeps getting involved in the conversation but doesn't really have anything to add? <laughs> Just make me laugh. Thanks, Uncle Joe. Thanks, Uncle Joe. Thanks for coming. We appreciate it. I'll get you another beer. Right, so... <laughs> and it's funny, and it's set, totally separate conversation, but it's good to see the mark differences. But in my 20 to 25 chunk, shall we say was when I was pre-first serious relationship, pre-kids, had a job, but I would say pre-career. That probably didn't kick off till I was in my 30s. Um, living at home, happy-go-lucky, shall we say, life at the time. But at the same point, I the, the point in Mr. Brightside, what it does to me is it talks about two things. The first part of the song is someone who is feeling jealous and is having all these imaginary thoughts in their head and it just makes them feel small and i would say especially once i'd had a few drinks and i start imagining the wonderful lives everyone around me is having while i'm earning a relatively low wage and living at home and can only imagine of these things other people do that i can very much resonate with that feeling the latter part of the song when he talks about coming out of his cage and doing just fine then talks about is him kind of pep talking himself and like you know i'm not i'm going to show you but no i'm good i know what i'm doing block these bad thoughts out because I'm on a path and I am going to do good. I'm not just there yet. It's, again, it's the second part of the message in that song. And I remember having that very pet talk with myself once I got a few more drinks in and a song came on that I liked that may or may not be this song and or other songs to dance to and then being optimistic, but really nothing to be optimistic about other than my own fuel that I was having a good time and I know I'll get somewhere eventually, but with no real clue as to what that looked like. And again, that's that's what that talks about in the song to me. And I can vividly remember those feelings and being there and being that person. And that song just like like a time machine is like I'm living those lyrics. I can actually each I can feel the time and the place and the smell and the sounds and everything. Um I'm now at the other end of that tunnel where I'm of a slightly mature age, not as mature as weird Uncle Joe, but, you know, at a stable place in my life where I have career and assets and relationship and children, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All those things that were just figments of my imagination back then that I imagined everyone else had, but I didn't for whatever reason, which, of course, was absolute nonsense. And I know that now. And I'd, always, I'd have these little rambling thoughts about this song when I heard it, but the bit of, oh, hold on, I actually got there, kind of clicked in one day when I was listening to it, almost subconsciously, where I kind of joined the dots. And I suppose my thought or message, which might be a rambling mess, is for people who are in that place where they're looking at stuff outside of their control, or they imagine other people have, or they haven't realised what they want to realise yet, is to believe in yourself and to trust the journey and to trust the path and not get sucked into all of that because chances are, to quote my good friend, weird Uncle Joe, if you do the work, you will get there. And to enjoy the dirt journey and not the destination. And I think my naivety back then was being really focused on this imaginary destination. I didn't even know what it was yet, but I was convinced everyone else had got there except for me. And it, it's only when I've kind of got busier in my life and forgot about that imaginary destination that I actually started on the path to where I am now, which is, you know, God willing, less than halfway to where I will be. Um, but it just, it, that feeling always comes back to me with the song. And it's just the more I started thinking about it and reflecting, the more I started to join those dots and actually think about how much, not more I could have achieved, I suppose, but how much less time I would have spent stressing about things if I could have let go of those feelings, which the song is about imaginary jealousy, and that's exactly what I had. There you go. That's my ramble on the song, which mm. expands into a wider thing. As Joe would say, discuss. Joe, what are your thoughts? I can see your analysing brain going at the moment. Could you see it, really? I can see it. 
there's a couple of things that come up like obviously quite inspirational song for you well very inspirational song in terms of it reflected your per reflected who you were and that you, you at that time um and you use this inspiration and you didn't realize but you, you were feeling so something that inspired you and you reckon listen to the song again and it gives you those feelings and you're quite what I liked about this is that you're really, like from an early age, it looks like you were like really looking inside yourself and how you really, you're really in tune of how you felt at the time. That's something I can't actually. I think I was probably more ruled by it than aware of it at the time. Yeah. I think looking back, I can see the cause and effect, but I don't think I was conscious or in control of it. Like I'd say I am now, I was more mm. directed by it. Yeah. And, and I think the inspiration piece um, also, um, that you can look back on it and it transports you right back to where you were like a memory um i think that's really powerful like um you know for me that song i just remember weddings and stuff like that and i didn't really when you said about what the lyrics actually meant i'll listen to that now through that perception that you have so it'd be interesting me to listen back to that because i i really i i really look at those songs as in like a i like a feeling to it I'm, you know i'm not really not really deep into the message but i really like that so i will listen to that and i'll look at that message so for for me it's that environment so you got there by doing the work and the environment you surround yourself are like songs like that and even if it was unconscious you listen to songs and having attaching a meaning to that has driven you in an unconscious way perhaps potentially where you are now and by doing the work and enjoying the journey right um but yeah i think music is a massively inspirational thing to use to get you where to where you want to be i use it but I have a playlist when I have to do something a bit mundane, I might stick some music on in the morning, stick some music on, gets me going and gets me to places. So I've got tracks like from Rocky. I talked about this before, haven't I? About Hits of the 1950s, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Well, no, but <laughs> I can't remember. I'm trying to think, do I know any songs from the 1950s? <laughs> probably. No, 70s is probably where I get my songs from, probably. So, uh, yeah, anyway, that's my thoughts on it initially. I think it's good to use music and it sounds like now you... Like the Steve Jobs, you went connected the dots backwards, you then got that song. Now you can look back, you've actually almost like followed that path to saying you're going to go out and you start achieving, which I think is really powerful. Um, and I think if we read more into songs or attach a meaning to them that can drive us forward, that's a really powerful tool, right? Using music as a tool to drive you to where you want to be by enjoying the work, making decisions and things like that. I think that's a really good thing. And it definitely gets me going when I, if I've got to do exercise or whatever, I've put Rocky on and that's something for me that I really enjoy. So... Yeah, over to Ryan, man. Have you got any um, thoughts on that? I really like that, by the way. I don't think I've listened to that song that way, similarly to Joe. Mm. And I can't pinpoint a time where I knew it was going to be okay. I just had to carry on doing what I was doing. But mine tend to come more from TV and films than it does from songs, things like that. Those kind of inspirational takes. And I've always been a kinesthetic learner, but I've always had quite strong visual tendencies with that as well. So like I can learn both if you show me how to do something, but also if I watch, I suppose that is the same thing. I learned, yeah, I learned both by watching and by doing it as well. So, but I, I, I pull different parts of information out from each way. Does that make sense? If I do it myself, yeah, I'll fumble my, fumble my way through it. But if somebody shows me how to do it, then I'll just mirror their approach. And then as time goes on, I'll just tweak that approach. You know, maybe cut a corner here, maybe don't cut a corner there or whatever until I get an approach that I like. Um, but mine come probably more from television and, and films. And um, I never regretted going to university until I watched Suits. And then I was <laughs> like, that? because when yeah. I was 16, I started my A-levels and I had law as one of my A-levels that I was going to study. Um, and at that point, I didn't know what I was going to do. Mum was quite pushy in me going to university to become an accountant because I'm quite good with numbers. Um, I wasn't sure, but I knew I had an interest in like the, the law and that kind of side of things. And I suppose that's kind of where how one of the reasons I ended up in the industry that we work in, I guess. I know it's a bit of a loose connection, but it is kind of a connection, I guess. And um, the course got cancelled after five days because not enough people had signed up to it. And it was at that point I kind of wrote off ever going to university or anything like that. Um, I feel I fear that if I'd have carried on doing law, I'd have gone to university and studied law and had, had and would have a law degree so what, by now. What happened there? Sorry, with your A levels, why did you not go? They cancelled the class because not enough people had signed up to do the class. Right. Um, there's only like four of us, and it needed like eight or nine to be able to be not profitable to run for the school. But 
Can I just tell you a little spooky story quickly before we move on? Yeah. So I, for my A-levels, I did three A-levels, including law. I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but there was a firmest way to go to university. And I was going to go and do law at university as well. And then didn't didn't as well. No. And and slightly different than you that I got accepted, but I just, I'd fell out of interest with law by the time I got to the end of the course. So it wasn't what I wanted to do. I then, my first, I decided I, it was like, right, I either need to go to university or I need to get a job that does professional qualifications alongside it. And the first one of those jobs I interviewed for was an accountant's job. Yeah, fair I enough. didn't get wow. it because I did no prep for the interview whatsoever. And they gave me some good feedback on the spot, actually, to tell me you did no prep for the interview. And then I saw another one offering professional qualifications in a different industry and did shed loads, probably too much prep and got offered the job on the spot in the heady field in which we all now work for the company at which me and Joe met. But I just thought the A-level law, going to do law and then not doing it, and accountants in the same story was really spooky. Yeah. Continue from my little sidebar. So, yes, the the course got cancelled. I then still didn't really know what I did, was doing. I had business uh, and retail as A-levels that I were doing as well. So I had some kind of professionalism in what I was studying. If you like, this was one of my other two as well. I did psychology. Did you do psychology? Oh no, sociology. So close, oh, so close. Could have been like father, like son. Um, <laughs> but uh, I got a job working at a fast food restaurant whilst I was at sick form. And well, similarly to it. similarly to to Lee, I got to the year where I would have to write my personal statement and submit applications, which I did do. I can't remember what I applied to do. I might have applied to do business management or something like that. And I got unconditional offers from a couple of universities as well, or whatever, whatever the phrase is, whatever. I got a couple, but I just never per- um, persevered with it because I like the idea of earning money. And similarly to Lee, I, I sat there and I said, I either need to go to university or I need to get a job that's going to pay me money. And at 16, 17, getting money every every month was very nice because I hadn't had that before I'd been exposed to that. So I was like, I'm just going to work. And then... I left that employment and I now work where I currently work. And somebody told me to watch um, a TV series called Suits, which is still very good uh, and very relevant. And I watched it and I was like, damn, I could have been a, a high life London solicitor. Could have been earning loads of money. Could have signed Michael Jordan. They all pretend to do in the show <laughs> and things like that. And I know it wouldn't have been as, as similar as that, but that kind of lifestyle of making sure I look as sharp as I can every day of the week and, and kind of deliver on good knowledge that people rely on me for is something that drives me. I, uh, I, it was at that point I was like, I really should have gone to university. And people were like, oh, you could go to night school and do it. I couldn't do both. I couldn't work and go to night university and study in my own time. I procrastinate my day job, let alone a degree <laughs> on top of my day job. I don't procrastinate my day job that badly. But you know what I mean? Uh, we all find ways to not do stuff and things like that. And I don't think I could admit to a a three what would probably turn into a four-year degree because of the time it would take plus then any of the additional qualifications on top of it then passing kind of all of the qualifications to you had to use that degree i just don't think i'd have ever have had the time i didn't didn't persevere with it but i remember having those conversations about it's time to get your your backside in gear and work out what you want to do with your life but they didn't happen until maybe three years ago maybe four years ago and that's coming up to nearly when we started this before then i was just getting up going to work coming home getting up going to work coming home living my life socially doing whatever you need to do getting money every month and then on what i want to spend it on and then just repeating the process and i, I was happy with that and in a way that simplicity is nice i like the fact that in control of my money i have no further responsibilities i have a car now which i'm responsible for because there's um, a finance agreement for it which is fine because that's almost counted as a pay I we pay A A Y E tax, which in the UK is where your tax before you ever see any of your money. It goes off to the finance company and that's done. So I still have my spending money. I still pay my rent to where I live. I don't have any children that I that I am dependent for. I don't have any house bills that I'm dependent for at this stage because I still live with my parents. I still pay them, obviously. But that simplicity is nice. And I think slowly over the last four years I've incremented and increased the amount of adult expectation and necessity that you're supposed to. I cleared the debts that I had because that's the right adult thing to do. I got a car on finance, which people were doing nine years ago at my age at 18 and starting to live their lives that way. 
you know, I'm asking to be, I have a, I have an okay credit score where I had so much debt, it wasn't very good, but I'm building that back up. I'm going to ask to be the name of one of the utility bills so that I can build my credit score that way. Cause that's one of the only ways I'm not doing it at the minute. I'm just starting to increment kind of adult life, like work. I've taken a lot more seriously and I've grown up in and, um, taken, taken leaps forward, long jumps forward on. And yeah, I think I can't remember a pinpointed time, but it all kind of circles around to some TV shows and, and some films and things like that that have kind of led me or straightened my path. Not that it was wandering before, but it's focused that path on the right things. And it's interesting, like you said, with the suits thing, the same way for me. So I don't think the song guided me as much as it's a reflection backwards. And it's interesting with suits as well, is it almost crystallizes a point in time in your mind that you can relate to from what you're you're seeing yeah. through what someone's portraying yeah and we probably all have them and like you said it was a big big decisions and big moments at the time but probably not decisions you regret now no not at all it's weird how um see to me i don't not i don't find it weird. that's the wrong that's the wrong word i find it surprising that you can remember the pinpoint time where you had that conversation and then moved your life forward from there to me, it wasn't a click of a finger. It was a really residual gradual. Oh, no, no, no. As I say, I don't, this is, this would be feelings I had multiple times over a period, you know, almost like within an era. And then, and I didn't, I didn't consciously do anything at that time. It's more like I was just someone who was envious of an imaginary life around me and felt like it was unobtainable. And then almost by living life, it happened. And then I can look back retrospectively. And that song takes me back to that time and that feeling and that person that I very slowly moved away from over the last, well, getting on for 20 years now. Yeah. And that's, again, it's all about environment, isn't it? It's about the things you watch. It's about the things you let in. We talked about this before, I think, in some way, shape or form. And I know that show you're talking about, Ryan, actually. I was just trying to I know Harvey was one of the main characters, and another guy, I can't remember the other guy, the, the young guy, I can't remember his name, but no, Megan Markle started Harvey Spectre right? and Mike Ross. That's it, that's it, Mike Ross, that is it. And Megan Markle, she was a, she was in there, wasn't she? She was. Yeah, so I think it's really valid, and I think when you look back, it just shows you the influence on the things that you listen to and watch have on the impact on your life when you don't really realise it, it. Yeah, for me, like I said to you, my, my point was the depression, but I didn't realise that until I looked back, and it's not... I'm over the impression is this is like a epiphany. It's like it's when you look back and you you look at the the things that you do from that point that slowly like it's a slow shift, isn't it? It's not like an epiphany. I never had an epiphany. It's like now you look back. It's the Steve Jobs in ATM connecting the dots backwards. You know, that's um, it. Exactly that. It. I think it's quite scary when you think about, it, isn't it? Because if you think that it's like things you watch or songs you listen to that can influence you in about 20 years that's quite scary now i think if we think about like ryan when you have you know when you have little ones or if you have every little ones or like you and lee me and you lee we have like young ones you know have we had this realization you know should we be you know because i know some parents like say listen to this watch this um i've never done that i've let them discover their own way i think people have got to make their own meaningful connections haven't yeah they? you can't force down people but i have known that people do oh you want to listen to it? and then they drench their younger ones with the certain things that they love right it's nothing more sharing it but they i want this person to love this so i will keep playing this and there's that whole thing around it i'm not saying it's a wrong thing i'm just saying none of mine have any interest in wrestling as much as i try and impart it on them but that's it's a, there's an influence there right but they will influence it will influence that person and you know things like that but i've won the i want it like you said i've allowed i've allowed my my, my girls to strive their own way so my daughter's like totally different things they're influenced by totally different things um i share what i like but that's you know it's not been that i've wanted i want them to do this so i want them to you know it's more around finding out but always one thing i did write down is like the, the common thing that i got from both of you was that you both didn't know what you wanted to do that's the big thing and i think people a lot of people suffer with that i suffer with it and i think what is that we just suffer from that not knowing what to do and then we have these influences and then we say right ryan says right i need to knuckle down lee says well that influenced me to go and start you know living my life and getting out there um there was something i was going to say and it's just gone but it was it was just something around that which was so powerful um where we do have to make that intention at some point 
but a lot of people don't know what they want don't know i mean i did a, i did a, i did a poll on twitter saying do you know your purpose you know and it was it was it was 60 percent didn't know 40 percent said they do and we're talking about a community that are you know the a self-development community so just shows you this and i think that's people. right that's part of the mission i think it's all right not to know and it's like you said it's joe it's a looking back thing and is it because it does influence now but it's almost like it reminds me how far i've come and that kind of motivates me to keep keep going i almost yeah. fear that if i did know i wouldn't have been able to live my life not to the fullest is that probably the wrong wrong phrase but I wouldn't have been able to live my life the way I wanted to because I'd have been so afraid of deter uh, deterring off the <laughs> yeah, path moving off that, of that predetermined track that I that I had forced myself onto because that's what I thought I'd wanted, you know. You know, I think the important thing with that as well is if you set yourself a rule that I'm going to achieve this, it's okay to change your mind. Oh, 100 percent. That's the thing, you know, because I think that's where we can get tied into. I, I you say, do you know, what? I want to achieve this. And you tell lots of people, then people get tied into that promise that I'm going to achieve this, and then they think, well, I've got to follow that because of that. Or maybe it's unconscious or conscious, and I think. You are allowed, and I think Ryan, you sort of talked about it last week. You are allowed to change your mind, and you don't have to be justified to anybody. I think you mentioned that last time, which I think is really, really important. And the last thing I'm going to say, I read a book, Duncan Bannatyne's book, and he didn't know what he wanted to do. Was thirty, and he was sitting on the beach, he hadn't got a job or anything. At thirty, he said, "I want to be a millionaire," and that's when he decided and started putting in the work about what he wanted to do. And he got into ice cream vans, got into uh, homes, you know, for for older people, and then set up the um, I think he's still into the um what's it called gyms yeah the gyms i don't know if he's still involved in it but because he's dragging them right so it just shows you that you know it doesn't matter what age if you make the decision put in the work because you love doing that work you can get there and when you go back look backwards you'll see those the dots you'll just see where it came from but like i say it's not necessarily a pivotal epiphany i suppose for some people it might be but it's not necessarily that, and I think a lot of people isn't it isn't a pivotal epiphany. But that was my take on it. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. That's yeah, that's my my share, which I'm glad we eat the whole show out. Just my share on something that inspir inspires me and why it inspires me. Well, I don't think we eked it. I think it was quite deep and stuff like that. Um, because I think we underestimate the power of, as Ryan said, films, and you said music. I think we can un sometimes us to rank them better. And depending on what type of music and you listen to and the things you watch. <laughs> influence is what we may decide in the future that's quite scary now that's really scary to think that that could influence you what you end up doing um but anyway yeah i loved it um, so, thank yeah. you right countdown time is on so time to do some shilling oh, thank yeah, you cool. everyone who listens supports what we're doing follow us over on twitter at listen to i n listen to i n we very much appreciate all the interaction there and search out joe on social media just put jose noy inspiration nation into your google machine and joe is all over the place um inspirationnation.org.uk for everything to the podcast most importantly our merch i've got a mug here anyone else oh. got anything to flash on the screen t-shirts hoodies all that good stuff all over at inspirationnation.org.uk there is joe upside down showing his face mask you can see that if you search us on youtube and of course check out joe on tiktok journey to ten thousand people he's creating that positive safe space on social media he's on there very regularly loads of great stuff jay noyer underscore inspiration nation can we just give some shout outs on tiktok we can give some shout outs on tiktok indeed hi d dot i think they just put a few highs in the in the chat rick grimes joined regular to the show i think i saw simon give us a load of likes thank you simon um what else i think there's someone else here as well uh who else was it oh yeah uh it was i think it's strange they might have changed their uh they might have changed their tag but yeah there you go some regulars back in the show it's good Thank and if i'm if my squinty eyes are going enough 30 minutes there is over a thousand likes there popular love yep. for the nation on tiktok check out what's going on follow joe and of course we will be back again next week yes all that's left for me to do is to count us down three Two, one. Inspiration Nation. Inspiration Nation. Catch, Catch you guys later. 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 That might be the best way. Let me know what your biggest takeaway is from this conversation. I'd love to know. Put it in the comments below and I'll respond to every single comment because that's the commitment I make to you in this community. Also, don't forget to subscribe right over here because we need you to build this inspiration nation community to get the podcast out there and to help other people for free. And also, don't forget to hit that bell right over here because if you hit that bell, then you're going to know when another videos go live. And don't forget to check out these videos right here next to me 
me because those other podcast episodes that can really help you out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, don't forget out to check the newsletter. The link is in the description below. That's where I can talk directly to you without through the YouTube, throughout the social, because you can have a direct communication channel with me through the email and you can get to know everything that's going on with Inspiration Nation, ask me questions and even give me suggestions on what you'd want us to talk about next. So I'd love to see you in the next video. So please click on those links. Please follow through. Please let's get this community building. I appreciate you. So until next time, I'll see you in the next video, Inspiration Nation, and I'll catch you guys later.